Okay, welcome everyone, and uh, welcome to the talk about uh, building the code and nurturing the people and overcoming some challenges uh, in open source community management. I'm uh, Carlos Arnal, and I'm uh, part of the Epicurio team. The Epicurio team is an open, uh, I'm going to do some introductions first about the community itself and also about, uh, about myself. Okay, we are gonna dip into some of the challenges we faced in the open source community management in our, uh, in our uh, project. First, as I said, I'm going to do a little bit of introduction about uh, myself. I'm a principal software engineer working for uh, Red Hat. I've been at the Red Hat for uh, four years now, and I have uh, over 10 years of uh, industry experience right now. I work, as I said, in the Apicurio, uh, in the Apicurio community. We have uh, two main projects. One is Apicurio Registry, and the other one is Apicurio Studio. I'll get to that in a minute, explaining what the, those are, so that you get some more uh, details. I'm also an active uh, Quarkus commuter because we have some in deep integrations between some of the projects in Apigurio and uh, the Quarkus project. And I'm also an associate professor at the Univ Polytechnic University of Catalonia, known as Barcelona Tech, for those that like those kind of, uh, of names. This is the, uh, the agenda that we, have, uh, that we have for today. After this, I'm going to do a little bit of introduction of the Apigurio community. But essentially, today we are going to delve into key areas that, they, in my opinion, <laughs> obviously, are essential for a driving community in open source. The first uh, topic I'm gonna discuss is uh, engagement and how to attract new contributors and keep them actively involved over the long term of the project. Usually it's easy to get some people started, but it's not that easy to uh, keep them over the, over the long term of the project. Then I'm going to continue discussing communication and different strategies for open source communities. One of the biggest problems we usually have in open source is communication across different time zones. I'm gonna, gonna discuss some strategies and some tools for those uh, kind of challenges. Then I'm going to discuss conflict resolution and approaches for managing disagree disagreements and fostering a collaborative atmosphere and, uh, and environment. Then we are gonna discuss also some discussing decision making and balancing the need for transparency. We are at the end of the day, this is open source, but at the same time having a clear direction for, uh, for projects, because otherwise it's not uh, sustainable. And that leads us to the last topic that we have for today, that is uh, sustainability and finding models that encourage the long-term health of the project and the growth of the project over, the long, over, over time. Hopefully, by the, by the end of the talk, I hope to provide some insights, some practical strategies, and also some real-world examples. I work on op in open source, so all, everything is coming from the, from the real world. Okay, so hopefully by the end of the talk you will get some ideas and some, and some strategies. I have a final slide at the end of the talk with the idea that I, I would like you to get after this presentation, but we'll get to that in a, in a moment. First of all, let me start by introducing the Apicure community. As I said, I work mainly in this, in this project. It's a sponsored by Red Hat, but that is a separate story. That's it. Actually, one of the reasons why I'm not going to be uh, speaking about sustainability from a, essentially a money perspective, because in our case, it's a, a project that is sponsored by Red Hat. And the Epicurio community is, an, is a community that operates, obviously, under the open source principles, meaning when anyone can contribute to the to development of tools and projects, etc. It's a community that is made of uh, developers, API designers, and different organizations who collaborate and engage the tools that uh, and sharing best, best practices around uh, API management, management, API design, and also schema designs. Contributions can range from, I don't know, code development, bug fixing, documentation, even providing fix, providing feedback for us. It, that is also contributing to the to the project. Overall, we try to make try to make it a hub for innovation around collaboration around the API mm, management and uh, and design. Okay. The main two projects that we have right now, as I said at the beginning of the presentation, are Apicurio Studio, which is a web tool uh, based essentially for uh, API design. And then we have Apicurio Registry, which is a data store for storing uh, and managing API artifacts and schemas like API definition, think of uh, Open API, Async API, etc. It supports Abro, Protobuf, JSON schema, etc. You, uh, you get the idea, right? It's useful for enforcing API consistency and governance across distributed systems or enforcing schemas in, uh, in uh, spaces like data streaming or things like that. Think about the schemas or in the Kafka space, okay? And now, the uh, building a welcoming environment. This is the first topic 
of the core of the presentation that I would like to discuss, and it's how to create an inclusive and welcoming environment for new, uh, for new contributors and also for people that has been contributing over, over time, since it's essential for any open source project, right? We must start with establishing clear guidelines, contribution guidelines, and a comprehensive uh, code of conduct. We have those in, uh, in our projects. They, uh, this kind of document sets the tone for um, interaction within the, any interaction within the community and also outlines the expectation and, uh, for any behavior that uh, happens within the community. It's also very important to have a very streamlined onboarding process for the, uh, for the project. When I, here, when I'm talking about the onboarding process, I mean having detailed, the, the, mm, detailed instructions on, for example, how to set up the development environment, how to, uh, to help newcomers uh, to the project get up to speed very quickly with, uh, with it. We have those also in, our, in all our documentation. Not only how to set up the development environment, but how to submit a pull request, the expectations that the, the maintainers of the project have when you are submitting a pull request to the, to the project, and uh, that this kind of uh, documentation. And also, this is uh, mentorship, I think it's, uh, in the, it's usually misunderstood in this, uh, in this context. It's not the kind of mentorship that you get with a more senior engineer and a junior engineer, but mentorship in the community in this uh, sense for newcomers is especially important. When they are asking questions, it cannot take three weeks, one month for someone to answer to a question in an open source community. Otherwise, if someone is a newcomer to a community, they are going to just leave that community and move to something else, right? That's, uh, that's what I am talking about, the mentorship in this, uh, in this case. There are other two aspects that I think are very relevant for building a welcoming environment in an open source community. One is inclusive uh, languages and, uh, and practices, and we emphasize the, the use of uh, inclusive language in our documentation and interactions. This includes avoiding jargon that might be usually confusing for, new, for newcomers in a, in a project, right? And ensuring that all communications is, uh, are respectful and, uh, and welcoming. And the other part, we don't really do that in the Epicurio community. I participate in other open source community and we do them like a lot. And I would like to introduce them also in the Epicurio community because I think community events are very useful for um, building a very, welcoming, uh, a very welcoming community. Newcomers can enter a, a community event or a community meeting and get the idea of what's going on, what people uh, is working, what they are doing, etc. So I think they are very important, important for building a welcoming environment. The, so the second topic I would like to discuss uh, in the engagement, top enga engagement topic is attracting new contributors to the, to the project, right? It's not only people is out there and we are expecting them to come to us and, and start contributing, et cetera. We should at least try to attract those contributors, come to our projects and start contributing. So one of the things we do is our reach efforts. We actively reach to potential contributors, either it's uh, to, through social media, either it's uh, participating in tech conferences like I'm doing <laughs> right now. You get that, uh, that idea, right? As I said, it's also very important to simplify the onboarding process. And for that, one part, uh, as I was uh, saying, is the instructions that you have in your documentation. But on, it's, uh, one thing I think it's really important, and I, I find that some projects don't have, the, don't have them. And I think that's very, very confusing, at least to me. And it's uh, getting those good first issues for, uh, in, uh, in an open source project. I think that's very key for newcomers in a, in a, in a project. Those issues that are well documented. I know that we maintainers, I'm a maintainer of this, uh, of this project, right? We maintainers usually can finish those issues like in, I don't know, in an hour, two hours maybe, or something like that. But those issues are very important for those newcomers to feel active and to feel productive and be able to contribute to an open source project. So I think that is a, a very important part of the, of the conversation. And it's also very important to highlight the benefits of contributing to an open source project. Usually you get some visibility. Usually you get some practical experience working with real uh, world projects. I mean, our uh, projects are being used by different uh, sorts of companies like banks, automotive, etc. right? So you are working on real world projects, real code, and you get, uh, you get experience contributing to those, uh, to those projects. Then it's also very important, I think, once that, con that first contribution uh, happened, it's also, it's also very important to actually recognize that, that, that contribution, right? That really engaged people that is contributing to an open source project. 
And at the same time, when someone starts contributing and asking, imagine that you have an issue defined in your, in your project, and someone is asking questions, it's very important for a maintainer to respond to those questions and continue with the, with the development of that, right? And always, and I'm going to, the, to be talking about this a lot during the presentation, but it's very important to have open and inclusive uh, communication. It's very, very important to be open about your, your, uh, your, about your project, to be op open about your planification, open about everything. It's, uh, I cannot really emphasize enough how important that, uh, that is. Now, also one of the important parts is uh, now we have our uh, newcomers in our project, but that now we want to sustain those contributions over time in our, in our projects, right? So these are some key elements and key tools that we can use. The first is pretty obvious. It may seem pretty obvious, but in my experience, it's not that obvious in, uh, in open source projects, right? If someone contributed, they, they now you have something that uh, someone maybe from another company, maybe an individual on their own contributed to your project, but you never really give feedback to that individual. So now they don't know if they did a good job, if you are happy with the contribution. So it's very important to give feedback to, the, to, the, those, to those individuals. And it's also, and I, and I think it's also very important and very relevant to really emphasize that, at least in my experience, in every open source project in the world, especially those that are big enough, you have actually opportunity for growth within the, an, an open source project. Yeah? You can start contributing uh, an, one of the, those good first issues, and you can, over time, you can eventually become a maintainer of the project over time, which should really, really emphasize how uh, important that is and how possible that is. And again, and this is a topic that is going to pair a, bit, a few times over the presentation, I cannot emphasize enough how important community events are also for sustaining long-term contributions over the, to your project, right? So I would really love to start doing them in our, in our community because we don't have them uh, right now, and I would really love to, to start doing them because I cannot emphasize enough how important those, those are. And another two aspects that are very important for sustaining lo long-term participation and long-term contribution, right? The first one is, again, some of, the things, of these things may seem uh, obvious for some, for some people, but they... I've seen a lot of open source projects out there make deep mistakes in this uh, in this uh, in this topic, right? The first one is having a clear road roadmap and uh, and goals. And by, what I mean by a clear roadmap is I have a plan for the next six months or eight months, eighteen months, whatever is uh, is your plan. You cannot be changing that plan every single week or every every two weeks. That is not going to help sustain the contributions of people to your project over time. Right? That is going to make just impossible those, those contributions. And again, for sustaining those long-term contributions is really important. For retaining those contributions, it's really important to support them and also mentor them, again, during those growth opportunities that I was, uh, I was talking about. And now getting to one of the biggest challenges we have, not only in open source and in open source communities, but <laughs> I will say probably in every single field in the, in the world and in every probably in everything we do, is communication, right? <laughs> this is the, for me, this is the biggest challenge we face in, uh, in, anything, uh, in anything we do. We have some particularities in, in open source, and especially in, uh, in our project. The first challenge we have is essentially that we work across different time zones. That is probably familiar to, to all of you. And for that, we rely on a, some, practice, some uh, strategies and some tools that I'm going to be talking about. The first one is asynchronous communication. We rely heavily on, uh, on asynchronous com communication tools like mailing lists, forums, and Sulib. For those who are not familiar, it's an instant messaging uh, platform. Think of Slack or something similar. It's uh, for those who are not familiar with it, but it's uh, very similar, okay? Since uh, that, uh, that asynchronous communication can ensure that no one misses important information in the, in the project. I have um, all the documentation or all the information I need to read. I have it ready for whenever I'm, uh, I'm ready to read it. I don't, I don't need to be paying attention to this meeting that is happening at this exact time. No, I have all the information I need, right? So, and uh, then a second uh, part that is uh, very important is um, those uh, collaborative tools and having those uh, issue tracking platforms like GitHub, we, like most uh, open source projects uh, that 
we use GitHub, but we don't only use GitHub for issues, pull requests, and that's it. <laughs> I've seen that a lot on, on uh, open source projects, right? We use GitHub for projects. We have roadmaps on GitHub. You can go to our community. You can see what we are doing right now, what we are planning right now. We, for instance, we are planning a major, a major release right now, probably coming out, in, out in, the, in September. And you can see the different milestones we have for the project. You can see everything in there. All the information is there, and you can just go there and read it on your, on your own. And obviously, and this is very interesting because uh, the other day in the, on the first keynote, Kelsey was uh, emphasizing this, and I really like that because to me it's basically the same, right? I mean, documentation is basically at the same level as code, and especially in open, in, in any code you write, but especially in open source, the, the documentation must be basically at the same level as, uh, as the code. If you contribute something and it's not documented, it's not documented for me, it's simply not there because no one can, uh, can use it, no one can see it, no, it's, it's, it's not there. So they are basically at the, at the same level. Other aspects that I think are very important for uh, when communicating across different time zones are uh, having flexible meeting times. Mm, try when you are scheduling different meetings, we try to rotate those, uh, the, the timing of the meetings. Maybe we, ha we have a meeting on Monday, I don't know, 12. And then we move that meeting to the to the evening and things like that because we have contributors all over the globe. We have, I'm based in Spain. We have contributors in, in India, here in the United States. We have contributors all over the globe, right? So we try to accommodate that for uh, for different people. I think uh, for the communication, it's also important to do mm, very mm, regular updates. Like whenever we are doing a new milestone for a major major release, we do a new communication on the blog post. This is the new milestone. Please give it a try. This is, are the new features, this is what's changing, this is what's not. That is very important. And it's also very important in this context to always uh, remember about inclusi being inclusive in your communication, being mindful of the different time zones. So it's important to, whenever you are sending a, a communication or we are communicating something, be mindful of that, include all the information you need that the relevant individuals, and also allow sufficient time for those individuals to uh, to respond, right? I, I remember that I was uh, collaborating with a few folk in New Zealand. I'm based in Spain. For those who don't know, it's like a 12 hours <laughs> difference, right? So I, start, I was starting my day responding to them, and then I had to wait for the next day for, the next day for them to, uh, to respond, right? So it's very important to, uh, to allow for, uh, for time for responding. And Ensuring an effective information flow is uh, also very important. I mean, we can communicate, we can be mindful about different time zones, but we need different uh, the things. And I, I already talked about the, a few things that we do. One of that is uh, the, those regular updates are also important for ensuring that the information flow is continuous and, is, uh, and it contains all the information that is needed, right? I was talking about documentation. It's not just documentation, but I think it's also important to have a comprehensive wiki about your about the project. Think about, for, insta for instance, the project architecture on, uh, on that, that and those kinds of things. It's not just the documentation about the technical documentation of the project. This is how it works. This is how it does not work, etc. No, it's about also about the the architecture of your project. And as I was saying, we use GitHub for more things than just pull request issues, and that's it. No, we have several projects we have boards for with all the information you can go there you can see the progress that is being made the progress that is not being made things that are also stale because we work in open source and that happens to the best of us we have uh, things that are uh, that are there for uh, for several days or weeks or even months right so that's uh, also very important to be able to see that and it's uh, essentially the same i those open meetings that i was talking uh, before I would really love uh, love to do, to, to do them. I have some suggestions on asynchronous communication platforms because those are the ones that, uh, that we use, but they are essentially the same, right? I mean, we use mailing list, we uh, use uh, those kind of forums, we use Sulip, that has also some uh, tools for, uh, for doing uh, forums. And we also share update, uh, some updates and uh, contributors can engage on, in those communication uh, tools and can ask questions, um, clarifications, anything they, anything they need, right? And now communications are simply inevitable in any, in any community, in, probably in any communication in general. 
miscommunications are uh, simply inevitable, but we can manage them uh, in a, in a, in the, with the right approach, right? So we encourage all, all contributors to communicate clearly, clearly and uh, concisely, providing the context for any messages that you, uh, that, you want to, that you want to send. We have those open feedback channels. Feedback goes both, way, both, both ways. We not only want to provide feedback to contributors about what they are doing, but we also want feedback from them about what we are doing. <laughs> so that goes both ways. And it's also, when uh, managing miscommunications, it's also very, very important to address issues uh, directly and uh, clearly, directly and promptly. It's not uh, good to wait for a, having a miscommunication and waiting two weeks or three weeks. It's not gonna help by, by any means, right? And uh, I think it's, this is a very important, uh, a very important part, the part about the encouraging questions. It might seem a, a, bit, uh, a bit obvious, but in my experience, there are uh, folks out there that are very, very shy, and they the, usually hesitate a lot of, uh, about asking questions. So it's very important uh, to me really emphasizing that there are no stupid questions in, a, in an open source community, right? You can go there, you can ask anything you want. I, I'm gonna try to explain that three times, five times, anything you need. If, if, you, if it's not yet clear, is that because there is some information that is, uh, that is missing, right? So I think I cannot emphasize enough how important that is in, a, in an open source uh, environment. Also, those uh, regular check-ins, like I'm, we are going to, um, in, the, in those communication channels, how this is going, how, how can I help, that is uh, very important for contributors to be able to see that, that progress and to ask for those questions. When can I expect that to be available if it, there is any progress? Can I help in some, in some way? That is also very, very important, right? And it's also very important to document your decisions, any decision you made. We document all the decisions we made in the centralized locations like in the project wiki or uh, on GitHub. You can, go, you can go to our GitHub and you're gonna see discussions. We are implementing a new feature, okay, this is uh, the discussion for that feature and this is what's going on and what's not going on, okay? About conflict resolution and uh, decision making, it's uh, very important to manage, uh, to manage those disagreements and to manage them, them uh, well. For that, I will recommend just a, a few things having a, that really depends on the, on the project, but I would recommend having a established com, uh, conflict resolution policy that uh, requires having a discussion inside the team and inside the, usually inside the maintainers, but I really recommend having one that is established so whenever a conflict appears, you don't need to, okay, what are we gonna do about this conflict? No, you go to your policy, this is what happens. This, 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 and that, and that's, uh, and that's it. And, uh, Always try to find the, the common ground. In any, in any disagreement, in any discussion, we are in, on the same project, we are all humans, so try to find that, uh, that common ground. There are other aspects that I think are very are important and are relevant, and is the, the role of mediators. We essentially use project maintainers at the, at the, for that role, right? And that is uh, very important. And this one is, for me, is very important. It's learning from, from uh, conflicts. Conflicts, mm, I don't think, I, I hope no one <laughs> likes uh, conflicts, but uh, we, um, we must uh, see them as uh, learning opportunities. I mean, for, to me, conflict has a, ne a negative uh, meaning. I, I, so I will love to have the discussions, but we must see conflicts as, uh, as learning uh, opportunities. So after resolving the disagreement, we must reflect on the situation, understand what, hap what happened, and if it was a conflict, a negative uh, thing, try to prevent that from ha ever happening in the, in the future. Okay, now for steering a collaborative uh, environment is simply essential for the success of any open source, uh, um, open source project. It's important to value the, the diverse uh, perspectives that are in the, in the project. As I said, for, for instance, we have contributors in India, Europe, in, uh, America, so it's very important to value the diverse perspectives, basic, basically because the solutions you're gonna have are gonna be more innovative than if you don't value those, uh, those contributors all over the globe, okay? And uh, we also try to emphasize uh, and encourage uh, teamwork in, the, in, our, in our projects, and I think that is, uh, that is very important. By teamwork, I mean not only collaborating, but doing actual pair programming sessions between different contributors, doing code reviews and collaborative, collaborative uh, problem solving sessions. I think that is very helpful for the for a project. Also providing those collaboration tools, as I mentioned, we have GitHub, we have the Tulip, uh, we have those forums. Having a clear 
shared goal and vision and uh, recognition of those uh, collaborative efforts and uh, the open and, uh, and inclusive communication is uh, is uh, is very very is very important. Okay. And now, this is a, an important uh, an important topic for uh, for decision making and also for uh, for conflict resolution, but especially for decision making. Whatever decision you're uh, trying to uh, to make in the, in your project is uh, the same about resolving the, the the conflict, right? We you must have a clear and defined framework for the for decision making in your in your project. Mm, the steps I would like I I have at the minimum are defining the problem, gathering the gathering input, evaluating the different options uh, options you have, and finally making a decision. You might include any other steps you might like in your in your project, but those are the minimum I really really recommend. And as I was saying, you might have different contributors all over the globe, so you must gather input from all those folks about all over the globe because you are going to have different uh, perspectives. Okay, and something that works really, really well for us is uh, consensus building, uh, consensus building techniques like brainstorming or multi-voting for uh, taking those decisions. If there is a, we must take a decision, and there are different opinions between maintainers of the project. I think that is uh, that is also very very important. And at the end of the day, we are building something. We want to make progress. If there is no consensus. You must have designated decision makers for your for your project. Okay. At the end of the day, someone has to take accountability. Someone has to be responsible and is the maintainer for a concrete area of the project. So you must have design, uh, designated decision maker for your for your project. And uh, for this kind of thing, as I mentioned multiple times, documentation is in this case is also very important because you are going to set the expectations for your for for everything. And the uh, having designated decision makers is also very important for taking timely decisions. Right? We, we, are, we don't want to have a discussion for six months and then start implementation. Whatever you were deciding is uh, already outdated <laughs> after, the, after, that, after that time. Okay? So it's very important to take those uh, timely decisions. And it's not just related to this, but whatever you do, always review your processes, review everything you are doing, and continuously, uh, continuously improve whatever you are doing. Okay, it's Im very important to gather feedback not only from project maintainers but also from uh, from contributors on all the processes you have on everything you have. It's very important to gather that feedback so you can reflect and change what is, uh, what's not working. And it's it's hard sometimes because we are uh, working on an, in a in an open source project, so we have, must be transparent, but we must balance that transparency with project di direction, right? So it's very important to have those open, uh, open discussions and gather feedback, as I said, from all the contributors over the, over the world. But at the end of the day, we must have clear leadership roles in the, in the project. Either, either it's leader in, uh, team leads, project maintainers, whoever it is, it's very important to have uh, those uh, le leadership roles very clear. This is the lead of this uh, concrete area of this uh, feature. And he's making the final decision. If there is no consensus, he's making the final decision, right? And for being able to balance this transparency and direction, as I was saying it before, it's very important to have mm, a clear roadmap and milestones and not continuously changing that roadmap and those milestones over, the, over time, right? That is uh, extremely important. And the three other aspects that, are, uh, that I already talked a little bit but that are also relevant for balancing transparency and uh, direction are having regular status updates, not regular st status updates like uh, updates on, like, I don't know, news or um, uh, social media, et cetera, but updates on the project progress. I, as I was saying, having the, pro the project board, it's something that is not very common in a, in a lot of projects, and I think that is very relevant and very, and very important. And uh, having those uh, feedback mechanisms like don't know. You can use f in, uh, feedback forms or uh, take the, those questions from uh, open forums. Whatever works for you. But the, those are the, the things that do, that work uh, that work for us. And finally, it's uh, very important to balance uh, to, to balance those uh, those two things, right? But mm, these strategies uh, ensure that contributors are well informed with uh, everything we are doing, and the project has a clear direction, and everything is working as we as we would like. 
there is something that is uh, very important for the for the project and is the the leadership role in a, in any in any project but and in in open source is no is no different it's very important for leadership to have a vision and direction about the, about the project and a clear vision and, and direction it's very important as i said multiple times for those leaders also to be inclusive and value the diversity across uh, across the project those leaders must be skilled in conflict resolution because at the end of the day they are going to be responsible for that and it's important for those leaders very important for those leaders to be transparent in the in their communication it's also very important for them to be to, for them to recognize con any any contribution and uh, the motivations of the the different individuals in the in the project it's also very important for them to facilitate collaboration uh, from the from the contributors and it's also very important for them we I talk about having a clear roadmap and clear milestones on, the, on your project, but it's also important for leaders to be <laughs> adaptable and responsive about the about the, the projects. Okay, and at the end of the day, the leader of the open uh, of the um, open source uh, community is the, the, responsi the responsible for uh, building a strong community culture, right? As I as I have discussed, and now. This is the, the last uh, slide I have uh, of uh, core content. If you, if you remember at the beginning of the presentation, I was talking about, I have a, a last uh, slide. And uh, if you are learn something after this presentation, I hope, I would like you to just remember this part, this slide. We all write, uh, write code. We um, are engineers, or at least most of us are, are engineers. But at the end of the day, we are all humans. We must never forget that at the other side of the of the computer, there is another human that is contributing to the to your project that has their own problems, their own their own things going on. So it's very important to do this uh, to do these kind of things. And, and uh, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to build those relationships, to recognize the non-technical contributions of a, of a project. It, it, it's, even if it's just hey, this is uh, this thing is not working. I'm just providing feedback for this feature. I'm I would like to see this other thing in your in your open source project. I cannot encourage enough how important it is to remember that at the end of the day we are all humans in a in an open source project, and we at least in my experience we sometimes forget forget that, and I and I think that is uh, that is very important. And uh, with that, we are uh, done with the presentation, and uh, I will take any questions you might have. Mm -hmm. um, I was curious how you might balance uh, you know, onboarding new maintainers more quickly versus you know, trying to gatekeep the community. Um, so you kind of have to balance the two things. I'm sure that people are actually ready to you know, go push code to master. Uh, I was wondering if you had any tips there. Any tips there? It's, a, it's a, it very interesting and it's tough at, at the at the same time. We what uh, I would really re recommend and again that part changed between the between different projects. But I would really recommend this and what at least what works uh, for us is for them to have a track, a proven track of contributions to the to the project of large features, good contributions. Uh, because if you have all those expect expectations set in your project, as I was talking about documentation, testing, etc. That is usually what, at least in my opinion, works over time for, the, for those individuals to become maintainers. And at the same time, you have to balance that with, uh, with time. You cannot, uh, if someone is uh, continuously contributing to the project, you cannot expect them to, uh, I mean, if they don't want to become maintainers, that's perfectly fine. But at some point, they usually would like to be a maintainer of, the, of your project if they are continu continuously contributing to your project. So you have to balance that time and not gatekeep someone for, I don't know, one year, two years, if they are continuously contributing to your, to your project. But at least, I, I'm, I'm not going to mention numbers. I mean, I, we usually use some numbers for, uh, for contributions to, uh, to our projects and then ask someone if they want to become a maintainer. But usually a few features, less than five or something like that, that's uh, usually a, a good track for someone to be, uh, to be a maintainer of a project.
Anyone else? Please. We normally use uh, GitHub discussions for discussing new features when we are uh, implementing them. So you can go there. You can. You might not be a maintainer of the project, but you can go there and comment on the GitHub discussion for the uh, for the feature. If we want to get together input from uh, from users for uh, something that we are implementing, do we discuss that in a GitHub discussion? And anyone, even if not not if not even a contributor to your project, they can go there and comment their opinion about the the feature. And then it's obviously up to you to take that feedback or not. No, no, no. We usually take anecdotal feedback. Yeah. yeah. Anyone else? No? Then thank you very much. <laughs>